Hey guys, Chris Piscardi. Today we're going to teach you how to create the horizontal navigation uh, on Google. So this bar right up here. So this is what we end up with. Nice highlights when you hover. We'll bold over what is currently selected. So, to the HTML. You can see that this is just the basic web page setup that we've been using. So I'm going to move into the new tags. We're going to use a header tag, which is used when you need to have a header for a section. So you can use multiple headers in a page. Uh, one can be your main header, which happens to be what I'm putting my navigation in. If you have an article, you can have a header for your article. Uh, there's also something called a section tag. You can have a header in your section. The next tag is the nav tag, which is a tag that is used for navigation. UL is an unordered list. So as opposed to an ordered list. An unordered list uses bullets. An ordered list uses numbers. And inside of the unordered list you'll see all of our list elements with some simple text in. So this is what you start out with. You get a unordered list of items with bullet points, and you can see that there's some margin, some padding. Uh, going through the CSS here, we're going to set the margin of the body to zero. Now because we're using zero, we don't have to specify pixels. If we were using something like five or six, we would have to specify pixels after the number, or a different measurement. There are other measurements such as EM. We're also setting the color of the text to DE, DE, DE. You can see that this light color is the result of that. Now the next CSS style is uh, setting the font family. In this case I wanted to use Helvetica, or actually a, a different version of Helvetica. Uh, but I wasn't sure if the user had the font installed on their computer. So as a backup, I included Helvetica. And as an ultimate backup, I included Sans Serif. Which, if you look at the Google logo, you see a little lip. And a Sans Serif font does not have the lip on the G. The next uh, style we use is to set the font size to 14 pixels. And then in our header tag, we set the background to a dark gray, which happens to be 343434. You'll notice that this is a commented out section of code. So if you need to write a comment, in your CSS, you use a slash followed by a star. And then you end it with a star followed by a slash. I'll explain why this is coming for that a little later. So since we're not using anchor tags, which is this, I'm setting the cursor, which is the little mouse that you have floating on the screen, to a pointer, which gives us this nice hand icon in the cover. If you use an anchor tag, that happens automatically. But since we're just doing a stylistic overview, we don't need to use anchor tags. Now I'm selecting the unordered list inside of the nav tag and I'm setting the list style type to none. This gets rid of the bullets. 
which is nice because a navigation usually doesn't have bullets when it's in horizontal form. We also set the margin and the padding to zero because naturally the UL tag in the browser, the browser style sheet gives it margin and padding. In this case we wanted to find our own and we actually don't want any there for us, so we set it to zero. Now to get it to show up horizontally, I'm using display WebKit box. Now when you look at this, it doesn't look like the other values that you can use. So it's not a number, it has a little tick in front of it, unlike none or pointer. This is because it's a vendor prefix. Uh, so far Chrome, Safari, and supposedly the newest version of IE, IE10, are all going to run on the WebKit. Uh, rendering engine. Browsers like Firefox have their own. Uh, Opera has its own too. So those would be Moz Box or O Box. Not zero. O Box. If you were going to target those browsers. Uh, if you do want to target those browsers, you can just lay it in there like this and whichever one is understood by the browser will be used. So if I'm using Firefox, it'll look at Mozbox. If I'm using WebKit, it'll look at WebKit box. Now this, now WebKit box naturally has a layout of horizontal. You can change this to things like vertical, but that's for a different video. Now I'm selecting the list items inside of the nav tag. I'm putting a padding of 5 pixels so that we don't get them all scrunched up. If I didn't have this padding, the R and the G would be right next together, the L and the C would be right next together, and it just wouldn't look very nice. Now you'll see some more commented out code here. I'll explain that a little later. And here we're using a pseudo selector to select the first list item that is a child of the nav tag. So if you look over at our horizontal nav menu, you'll see that it's Christopher. That's our first list item. It's what's being selected by this pseudo selector. So on the first list item, we're setting the font weight to bold. As you can see, it's definitely a little more bold than the other characters. And the color to white. Now, this looks great, but we're not done yet. Because we want to use a different background color on hover. So when your mouse hovers over it, you get that nice light gray background. So we're going to use the hover pseudo selected on the list elements inside of the nav tag. You'll see that all the pseudo selectors have this colon in front of them, which means that on the list item, when you hover, and we're going to set the background to an RGBA value. This is just another way to write a color, just like this hex value for white, or these hex values for gray. What this means is the red, the green, the blue, and the alpha value. So the red, green, and blue are between 0 and 255. So if you want a lot of red, you use 255. If you want a little red, you use 0. And the same for the others. If you put them all at the top, 255, 255, 255, you'll get white. If you put 0, 0, 0, you'll get black. Now this alpha value sets the transparency. So this goes between 0 and 1, and right now we have it set at 0.2, which gives us a slight 
white tint when we walk, when we hover over it. And that's how you create a horizontal nav menu. Now I told you I was going to explain what the comments are. So you notice I used WebKit box in this CSS view. The problem is that WebKit box isn't supported in all the browsers. So if you want to do something for IE6, you're going to have to use a different method. In this case, if I comment this out and use this code and the code up here, it will create a horizontal oriented menu. Now I have to set the display to block. And we're going to float it left on the list elements. So what this means is that we're setting it up as a block structure, and we're stacking them left. So if we uncomment this height of 40 pixels, save, and just open this in a new tab you can see that it does look very similar but in fact we haven't set our padding correctly so you'll see that when we hover over the list items it doesn't look as nice so basically what you have to do is when you use this technique for getting a horizontal list menu you have to do some math and figure out what your padding and your margins need to be to get these hover states to fill the entire height of the header or whatever your container is. And that's one reason I like using WebKit box when I can. Personally I, I really design for modern browsers so it's not really an issue for me to use WebKit box or Mozbox or Obox. But if you're targeting older browsers, you have to know what to use. So thanks for sticking with me, and I hope you learned something. Uh, leave me a comment below, or follow me, or circle me on Google+, and uh, we can start chatting. Thanks.